Hi, Bharti here. 21 years of Studio Tara. Another episode of Arranging Facets. Today, the stone I'm going to talk about is amber. Undoubtedly, the most interesting stone because of its formation, its resin. It's not a mineral uh, gemstone. It's not found in rocks. It's not made because of heat and temperature and pressure. But it comes because it's a sap of a tree, which is clear, luminescent, orange, yellow, sometimes blue too. It takes millions and millions of years to form. 100,000 years is the, car, uh, is the gem quality amber that we have. But apparently it takes millions of years. So, you know, the oldest amber is more than 350 million years old. As it's forming, when it's tree resin and when it's wet, insects get caught in it and trapped and get, they get fossilized. As we saw in Jurassic Park, that might have been fiction, but in, in actuality, geologists get a lot of information from amber. It's precious to them as it's luminous and precious to us too. I think the Greeks used to worship them as the sun because it has so much of orange and brightness to it. Amber was considered so precious that it used to be buried with the dead in the sacrophagus in their casks. As I had mentioned, amber is fossilized tree resin. It takes millions of years to form. It's, uh, there are shades of amber, orange, yellow and sometimes blue. Blue is very rare. Amber too is heated. When it is heated, spangles form in it. It's almost like sun, you know, there's just rays of the sun. It's very interesting to see. The heating can be natural or man-made. Amber is luminous, golden and ancient. It's very rare and most gemstone jewellery stores have them. Having said that, I have a lot of clients who bring back. I myself, before I started a jewellery store, had a lot of amber that I picked up from curio stores. Most often, these are synthetic. If not, they're heated or treated. Almost always, it's best to buy amber from a jeweler. I have here amber bangle. I've cut that from huge rough. So I bought a big, big piece of amber and then I hollowed it out and I made this really beautiful bangle. It's quite rare. It's of course untreated, unheated amber in its natural form. It's got spangles that naturally form and is a very um, big quality of amber as a gemstone. So it, it lets light pass through it, which gives it that luminosity. Amber actually makes really lovely cufflinks because in a white shirt, most men wear white or light blue shirts. It looks, it just stands out without being too showy. I do a lot of amber cufflinks in Studio Tara and I quite like it. Of course, it looks best on women. There are very few organic gemstones in this world. Pearls, corals, ivory if you can call it a gemstone and amber. Amber, because it has animal life trapped in it, becomes more interesting, not just for humans and for jewelry wear, but also for geology and for studies. Amber is worn as beads a lot. In India, we love beads. Italians love beads. I think everybody loves beads. And amber is worn in chunk, big chunky beads. Since its hardness is very low, it's very easy to carve amber. Buddhas, I've seen many amber Buddhas, they're so beautiful and luminous. Basically, it lends itself to jewellery, to research, to sculptures, for a lot of things. Just being a sap of a tree, I must say it's elevated itself in everybody's eyes. I'll see you in the next episode.